Welcome to Scale Model Basics. I'm Tim Kibwell, and we're going to talk about painting photo etched metal parts. Now, the biggest difference between photo etched metal and other materials that you might be using in your model is that photo etched metal is really smooth. There's not a lot of uh, texture there for paint to cling to. So let's just take a look at what it looks like when you try to brush paint acrylic paint onto onto a photo etch metal part. Get a little bit of water here on the brush. And this paint's fairly, fairly thick. Oh. So you can see that you're getting, I'm getting a lot of brush strokes in there. It's just kind of, Rather than painting, what you're kind of getting is smearing. Rinse this brush out a little bit. You know, you'll notice that sometimes it'll pull away from raised details, but really you're not getting a very good, you're not getting very good coverage. Now, and plus I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm kind of messy with my application, but that's okay. It's all for demonstration purposes. Anyway, so you can see that <clears throat> a single coat, that's not great. That doesn't look all that, uh, all that good. Can you come back through and put a second coat on? You could. And you can, as you can see, yeah, you can get better coverage. But if you have to do two or three coats or more over, let's say, some fine photo etched metal details, that's gonna start obscuring your details pretty quickly, right? And that's not something that you want. Another problem with hand brushing paint onto photo etched metal that is bare or unprepared is that it's gonna be really hard to get that paint to lay flat, and that too is gonna, going to obscure details. This is acrylic paint, hand brushed on, what do you think lacquers or enamels would look like airbrushed on? Let's go find out because Aaron is over in the workshop right now waiting for us. Thanks Tim. First up I've got some enamel paint and the unprepared photo etch metal part. Let's see what happens when I airbrush that. See, it's still wanting to pull away from the edges of the number there and around the thing. And again, you can do multiple coats, but it still is just not very even. Still looks a little uh, like it's wanting to pull away. And the longer it goes on, stays on there, you can see it's going further and further. It's pulling further and further away. So you would have to put multiple layers on to cover it. So that was enamels. Let's see what happens when you spray lacquers onto unprepared photo etch metal. This is SMS lacquer. So that is actually looking really good there. Lacquers tend to be pretty aggressive. So this may be the one paint that you can get away with using directly onto unprepared photo etch metal. I wouldn't recommend it with the acrylics or the enamels, but with this uh, lacquer, it's spraying really well and covering really well. Thanks, Aaron. Nice job. So before we get going any further and before I start seeing comments or emails coming in, and you're asking, well, you hand brushed the acrylic paint, but you airbrushed the enamel and the lacquer paints. Why didn't you airbrush the acrylic paints? The truth of the matter is that the result that you're going to get with airbrushing the acrylic paint or an enamel is going to be pretty similar. So as we saw here, this is me hand brushing the acrylic paint and you, you know, it did not cover very well at all. 
This is the enamel that Aaron airbrushed, and that's after two coats. So what we're seeing is that it is still peeling away from the details, and it's just not covering the photo etch metal, that, that brassy color underneath, nearly as well as what we would hope. And that's pretty much what you're going to see with an acrylic paint as well. The one that covered the best is the lacquer. And that's not surprising because lacquer is uh, solvent based and that solvent is pretty aggressive. And what you're going to find is that a lot of your primers are lacquer or solvent based primers. So there are a few techniques that we can use to prepare our photo etch metal for paint. The first and probably the easiest is just come in and simply prime the part, right? So here we've primed this piece with Tamiya, Tamiya Primer. Everybody's familiar with it. What's nice about Tamiya Primer is that it is a lacquer. That means it's solvent based. And so like we saw with the paint that we had used earlier, the lacquer paint, it goes right on, it adheres well, and what it will do is just provide a nice base for you to use acrylic, enamel, or lacquers on later on. And you're gonna be able to brush, airbrush, or spray paint those. Another thing that we can do is use a fine, super fine, super, super fine, sanding stick, sandpaper, or 4 aught steel wool. And all you're gonna do is just abrade the surface of the part just enough, just enough to give it a little bit of tooth for the paint then to adhere to, right? And then you can come in and you can brush paint or you can airbrush right on top of that. And you may not even see the difference and that's fine because it's the, the scratches that you're putting in there are just that fine. It may change the color of the brass just a little bit so that it's less yellow, might be a little bit more silver, and that's fine too. Just as long as you're not doing it so much that you're eliminating any details that you want to make sure that you keep. The last thing that you could do is a combination of the two where we sand the part first and then go ahead and use the primer on it. There's nothing wrong with doing that. That's just, you know, making sure that you're getting the best adhesion possible so that when you come back through, then you can, again, paint by hand, airbrush, spray paint right over the primer, and then you're ready to go. Now, there are gonna be modelers out there who say that they dip their photo etch parts in vinegar and use the acid from the vinegar to etch the part first, and then they paint on it. Others use black in it. Some people have used lye or Drano. That may work for those modelers, but for us, these two techniques and then the combination of the two are the ones that we recommend. Primer with a lacquer-based primer like Tamiya, sanding with super fine sandpaper or sanding stick, or using those in conjunction with each other. Thanks for watching. I'm Tim Kibwell, and we'll see you next time.